Hey, Tara Caliendo here again from Dedicated Managers. And uh, I just wanted to show what I've been up to again um, last. The um, last thing I did, I think I talked about, was the um, issue where properties weren't being reactive. And then I, in that video, I said I was going to talk about um, this next step that I took to abstract the these hard-coded function names to more generic things. That way I could have different entities as opposed to a primary caregiver. I could have a secondary caregiver or a child or whatever that uses the that's those same functions to communicate with the uh, store with I'm sorry with the Firebase. So let's take a look at what that means. I'll start out in the client view. And you can see this is the diff file between what changed between um, you know that that between this beginning of my abstraction technique. I, I branched off here because I didn't know if it was going to work out, so I created a branch and started these changes, and then ended up merging it back in once it was complete. But if we take a look at you know my first uh, change in the client, you can see that I had these current primary relative caregiver was a hard-coded property or variable in the storage, which this is the storage here, right? Store.state. I was hard-coding this as a variable, so if I needed a secondary caregiver, I would have to you know, create another variable. Instead, what I created was a current entity object where I'm going to load all the current entities that I'm looking at, whether it's the um, you know the primary relative caregiver, the secondary relative caregiver, or the child, I can load it into this current entity thing and then pass it the name, and then it's going to be stored in what it looks like an array here, but it's actually a um, an object being accessed by you know the array parameter because that's I'm going to end up putting variables in there. Um, or, or that is, yeah, um, actually I end up moving that to a variable in the next um, commit. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, well, actually I'll show it now. So if I look at this one, I think, no, nope, maybe not. At some point here, I did it here, I updated it here, um, where I take out this hard-coded string and I put it as a uh, component here. Uh, or as a, as a local variable that comes from the data section so that now when I copy and paste this file and I create a new whatever I'm creating that's the new entity I can just change the variable here and I don't have to change it in every single one of these where it's hard-coded uh, it'll just be updated by the variable so it'll be just um, you know see how this collection ID if I change this to a secondary and copy and, and just create a whole new file then I don't have to go to each one of these and update the primary relative it's already automatically updated because it's using a variable so that was just a little um, way to make things easier and, and I'll show how I ended up just copying and pasting a new form um, and how easy it is once things are abstracted to create new entities and the reason I want to be able to do that with um, with having different entities uh, rather than just you know one current entity is the primary relative caregiver is going to have like maybe five children below it tied to it so I'm going to need to store the current primary relative caregiver as an entity and each of the um, the, the child children as as entities so I'm going to have a growing list of current entities based on you know however many um, uh, you know uh, objects are, are tied to this you know this this entity how many entities are sub nested I guess you would say so that's what I'm trying to set myself up for is nesting entities um, so let's see that's about it for this file is I just needed to change that uh, and then the methods also um, you know they were calling a hard-coded function and now they're calling a generic function delete entity rather than deleting the primary relative caregiver I'm deleting an entity and then I'm sending in the collection ID and again later I change that to a variable so that I don't have to change it in every single one when I just copy and paste for a new a new entity um, so I can use this like as a this file as a template
So let's take a look in the store real quick. You know, similar, a lot of similar updates. I got rid of this hard-coded um, query listener. So this was this held the listener that was returned by Firebase that would listen for changes from Firebase and then go and update the um, the variables on this on the the form. So they were kind of tied to that. And then the current primary relative caregiver, that object got changed to an entity, which um, remember at the time I had an issue with this was because I, I wasn't understanding that properties when added, I need, when added were um, not reactive. So I had to hard code that, but then I ended up taking that out and figuring out what to do. That was the last video. But anyway, so this this these hard coded primary relative caregiver got got lessened to these these other two that are going to be um, objects that can contain multiple different um, what are now I'm now calling entities as opposed to hard coding a name. So um, let's see down here, you know, initialize current primary relative caregiver. It became an entity. So basically, I'm just abstracting everything out and then sending in the um, the this, sending this as part of the object, which in this case, it's the name. I later changed that to be smarter uh, and have the, because it's actually the storage um, collection name. Um, I don't think I have any collections created right now. If I add a client and I do this and I put some junk in there, uh, and that should be saved now. So now I've got um, something going on here. Anyway, if I refresh this, come on, Firebase. There it is. This doesn't seem, if you add a new key, Firebase doesn't seem to update right away. It, it, you have to refresh to get it. Anyway, um, something went wrong over here. I don't know exactly what. There it is. It was just slow. Um, anyway, so the that's this, this primary relative caregiver. That's what I was trying to get to. Um, so that ends up being the document collection ID name. So I ended up calling that the, the, the collection ID in later versions um, rather than just name. So again, I'm getting I'm getting off here. The 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 main thing to understand is that what I've done is abstracted things out so that um, you know I, I can do this where I can can call these functions not just for one type of entity but for a bunch of different types of entities and so same thing down here it's all you know done by the container the container contains you know, some kind of ID that tells me what I'm working on. Um, this one contains the collection ID that tells me the collection I'm working on and then sub the, the document ID. So I think that's all I really need to say about that. It's all the same throughout. Um, down here, you know, I talked about that listeners. So this is the now the listeners and then I give it tell it what listener it's for, which collection ID um, it's used for. And then I create those listeners, which ultimately they are um, what comes back from the Firebase call that um, you can pass a function to, uh, which is here, so that when, when Firebase sends an update back to my program, if something gets changed either in another window or directly in the Firestore, Firestore call, sends it to this listener. This listener then calls this function, which updates my, my storage. Um, so I call that, you know, initialize current entity and I pass the doc data that comes back. So, um, you know, again, passing, uh, 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 accessing functions, um, you know, generic functions and sending in the, um, the, the collection ID uh, or the parameter that, that names what that entity is. So, that's it for that. That's that's um, pretty much this merge right here. And so then I can kind of show here. Um, well, that's right. Made it did that easier thing to. Um, I, I changed the the client to um, so that I don't have to change this everywhere. And that's I'll show you that now in so I, to add a new child. 
So this is what it takes to add a new entity. So uh, I've, in this commit, I want to change, I want to add a child. So in the store, I did have to do a little changing here, and this had to do with the redirect after the, a new one is made. So if you create a new entity, whether it's the primary relative caregiver or the related child, afterwards you're gonna you're gonna um, you're going to redirect to that newly created child or um, or client. So if we look at it like this, if I go add new client, watch up here, you're going to see the the slash client slash add, and then it's going to redirect to whatever the ID of the new client is. So there's the add, and then it redirects to um, to this. So that's all that's doing. That is um, that's just deciding where to where to um, redirect based on which entity type I've just created. Um, and then in the store, so or in the that was the store. Um, I think I said that was the router before, but that was that's the change in the store. Um, in the router, which you would think that other part would be part of the routing component, but it's not because it's making a change. It's creating a new collection. Um, there's collection add. It's creating a new collection and then you know um, redirecting to that new new object, that new entity the form for that new entity. And so here in the router, I obviously have to tell the router that there is now a child component and how to get to it. So the path is slash child with the child ID, which can be add or the actual ID. So now that's allowing me to, um, nope, wrong one. That's allowing me to, I haven't, done any navigation for it, but if we go to child slash add, that's what's allowing me to, to click add. Now it's redirecting to here with the, um, that's, that's this route. So this, this, what's happening up here is being defined by the, where's my diff file? By, you know, this route. So the slash child says, hey, call the, um, the, the child component, and that's where that form comes in. So then I added the new form, and it's hard to tell the difference. So what I'll do is, let's see here. Um, let me check out this. So let me find this commit here, and I am going to copy the commit. And then I'm going to bring in my code here. And in the shell, I will um, get checkout. I'll check out that code. And so that'll go back to the old code. Now I'm, I'm looking at the old code here. And where was I? I was looking at the, the child.view. So that would be this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the client.view in this same state. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it into the child view. So now client and child are the same, but my if I save it, my diff file, if that worked, so I should be able to look at the difference between this and this. Oops. Nope. Here to here. No, it's not letting me do it. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's that that is what it is. It's going from here to here, so that is the change. So if I look at the difference between, so now it's like I'm reverting it, but we can look at what um, what has changed. What did it take to change the um, the the primary the caregiver to a child view? All I had to do was, so I changed the primary relative caregiver to child. Now remember, this is backwards because I'm, um, you know, putting the new one in, to just putting the old one back in to show the difference. So it's actually reversed. But the child, so I changed it to child. Um, I had to just change, you know, delete client to delete child. Um, are you sure you don't want to delete this child client? So just some minor fixes. Um, the name of the component I changed to uh, to 
to child. And really this, I, I should abstract this out because it's, it's a prop that's sent in. It, it really doesn't matter. Shouldn't be child ID. It should just be generic entity, I, um, you know, entity ID or something like that. I'll probably abstract that out later. And then the collection ID. And so this is where I just change rather than having to change everything in the, um, um, the entire file. So having to change all of, you know, each one of these where it said, where it was hard coded here that I talked about previously. Um, now I just change it here from re primary relative caregiver. That's the collection ID of the fire store to the related to related child. That's going to create a collection ID for that. Um, I took this out because you don't have a client intake for a child. That's just a, a simple thing that I took out. Uh, same with the navigator program and client type at intake. Those are just, you know, fields that I took out of the form. Um, and um, then I call the, um, the it created, I, I really, there's no change here. It's probably just a small semantic change. Um, Oh, I see here, yeah, child and client changed here, and that's why I should, again, um, abstract out that variable. Um, if this, I just make a generic variable because it's only relative to each local um, com component, I can change that to just something generic, and then I won't even have to update that when I create a new thing. So really, just all, all I have to do when I copy and paste a file is, is, is change these are the big things to change right here. The name and the, um, the component collection is what I'm trying to boil it down to so that I can just create new forms on the fly by just copy and pasting you know, this one file. And I don't have to go anywhere else in my application and update that stuff. It's just all figured out on the fly. And that's the way I'm really trying to build this so that it can be truly dynamic on the front end. Um, so you know, again, here's that child that, um, that I just created. And, and um, it differs from the, um, you know, from a, from a client in that the, um, you know, the navigator program and client type at intake are still, they're there. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Oh, I, it's, it's there because I saved the, this is actually you know, primary caregiver, even though it says child, it's because I saved that file to, to show the differences and then it recompiled and ran it. So that's actually broken, uh, because I, because of what I did here. So really I have to, um, uh, let's see, I, I need to, you know, drop this change. So to drop that change, I really have to, um, let's see, I got to check out, I got to go back to master and check that out. And then uh, I can just uh, revert to uh, hard discard all changes back to this update. So now I'm back to where I was. So that's, that's the abstraction. Hopefully it was understandable. Probably pretty long again. How long did I go here? Uh, 20 minutes, 18 minutes. So um, again, I'm just trying to make things easier for myself in the future by making them harder in the short term. I don't know. Um, but the, by abstracting things out, I can reuse those functions and I didn't have to you know, copy and paste. I really get annoyed when I go into people's code uh, you know, as a consultant, I'll go into code that somebody else did or somebody hired out and I'll see, um, you know, rather than, than abstracting it to something like this, I'll see this function, the exact same function copied and pasted seven different times with a different variable name. And it just drives me nuts if I have to go and change like one small thing. I got to go find seven functions that have it and change it everywhere. Whereas this, I've abstracted it out to the point where if I need to make a change, there's one place I change it and it affects everything, which is the way it should be because they're all pretty much going to act the same in this area as far as you know um, the storage of the data, as long as I keep it uh, dynamic en enough. So anyway, Terry Caliendo, 19 minutes, almost on 20. Thanks for uh, paying attention and uh, have a great night.